you're with uh, Christine's Corner, part two, uh, with uh, Richard and Andy, the psychic and the shrink. Um, so Richard, on our last segment, uh, I had started to ask you about electricity. How um, can evil spirits travel through electricity? Or can they see you or use electricity to get to you? Or to say that they're here? It's a much better question that you just asked than you have any idea. We are, um, our spirit is one thing. We're a spirit living in a body that is a biochemical factory. And it is only the electrical. That's how our nerves fire. It's why if, <coughs> if um, like if you have uh, your grandson puts his hand on a hot burner and all of a sudden gets like, oh, oh, removed. Oh, that hurts. But he knows now that's hot. That electrical, neurological just saved him because he now knows that it'll hurt him. Because other, And if it didn't hurt him, he had his hand like that and then he'd be talking and then all of a sudden, oh my God, what happened to my hand? No left hand anymore. So all this electrical part of our body, um, all the things that go into it are all part of this intermeshing of energies in the physical world that's part of our makeup. And one of them is the various kinds of electricity um, um, and, and regular electricity. That's a very good question because here's the point. If, if grandma or mom or dad or a guardian spirit or a loving friend show up, and we've all heard many stories, are most of them true? Yeah, they probably are. Um, is that possible? It, yeah. It happened to me. Yes. Um, but what if it's a spirit you don't want? What if it's a spirit that shouldn't be there? Uh, what if it's a spirit that doesn't like you? Uh, they barely have any energy, um, if at all, on their own, because they're not working in the light of God, you know, the quote marks. Um, so they have to get it from somewhere. They get it from us. I have never been on a, on a haunting that has gone on for a while where people weren't emotionally followed by or including physical illness. I'm talking about cancer being anywhere from six to ten times normal um, because they will borrow it from us because they don't have a right to be here. So they'll, they'll use it. And so a family might have a presence and then they'll, you know, what do we do? And then it'll never happen in front of, say, the father. And the father, it'll purposely avoid the father. So the father's um, going to say, you know, to his wife, honey, whenever I go away, it seems to happen, but not while I'm here. I know you believe it's happening. She's now angry in heck. She has a PhD in science. She's a great mom. She's no one's fool. And he now doesn't believe her because it's convenient. Now, she's angry at him. Why? Well, why is because she's a little bit ticked. But what that does is it gives the spirit more energy to not just inconvenience a family, but to have them argue because they are able to take that so-called kinetic energy and have it for themselves. And that is exactly what you're seeing now in the world and in world politics. Wow. So that's where you come in, Andy, and you get the people come in and say, I had, a, I had a client who was one of the most disturbed people without a psychotic diagnosis that I ever worked with. And so um, I says, uh, said to her, you really should call uh, Richard. She got on the phone with Richard and instantly hated him. Instantly? Instantly. She saw me and she went on and on and on about what a crackpot he is, how he's nuts, how he's crazy. Um, her electric bill for her home was over $800 a month. Wow. And they didn't use a lot of electricity. Uh huh. I see what you mean. And so, if you find with people that are like really, really, really dark, they can have like a visceral reaction to him. To also be told, oh, don't listen to him. 
But I, I, that's okay. Because they're either not ready or I can't fight that. No. They're not ready. Yeah, but she had an electric bill. And so what was, what was happening? Something was feeding off of her electric grid. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. I never heard that before. Uh, not in that way. And she's like, why is my electric bill so hard? Yeah, they were using the energy. And I learned that from one of the warrant cases when I used to work with Ed and Lorraine. Where we were at a house that was $750 electric bill that used to be about 205 Wow. And when we finally were on the second try, we succeeded in, you know, making it. We something we get it with like a house exorcism. And uh, and, and we left it and everything was fine. Their electric bill went right down. Wow. No, does that always happen? No. I'd rather take it off the ele off the electric bill than people's bodies, because that can't happen and people are utterly drained. And in the rain, can you explain who they are? Sure. You said you used to work with them. I know they just did a movie. Well, they're both have passed now. Yes. Conjuring, I think it was. Anyway. Conjuring one, Conjuring two, two about the doll, and I put the roof on their museum. And the three men who worked with me all had serious problems within three or four days. Because they kind of went, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, look, I'm going to white light you. you gotta, you got to ask for like anything from here to be, you know. And they all kind of, yeah, right. They didn't take me seriously. And I, I don't necessarily want to say, you know, but they all experienced they shouldn't. Right. They, sh they, they shouldn't have done that. And, um, you know, things just kind of worked out. But I caught a lesson there, too, because even Lorraine said, did you pay the men? I went, yeah, before they ever came on the job. They all worked for me. They wanted to help me. They kind of all owed me, you know. Uh, not money, but they owed me uh, being the gracious. They said, we went working for years. And um, goes, how come there was tools all over the, uh, the, the roof and all your nails were all over the yard? I went, you know the things that went in your, uh, you know, the breezeway, it's in one of their books? the tornadoes, so to speak. Right. Well, what do you think? They're not there for me. I'm helping you save everything you have in here. And I'm helping you, and I'm doing it for the cost of it getting done. And maybe something didn't like me, so it wants to put a wedge between you or I, or at least to get me intimidated. And mm -hmm. I grew up in a way that I, I, I learned that my worst enemy is to be intimidated. I might be, but I'm never going to show it, and I'm going to work against it. Because it's like any predator, whether it's a group of kids or anything else. If they smell weakness, they will go for it. So it might be there, but I won't display it. I will not be intimidated. So what did I do about it? I picked up my nails and tools. That's what I did. Ah, that's it. What do you do? Okay. And I looked at Lorraine, and, and, and just was kind of smiling. But I didn't work with them because I wanted to. No. I worked with them because I had to. I, I worked, um, as soon as I stopped all drug use, um, I, it wasn't a month, uh, I had to move, uh, just by least up. And my friend, who's a wonderful guy to this, to this day, and he said, I have a farmhouse, you could maybe give me an option on it, but why don't you take it? I don't know what to do for a year or two, move in. I've heard some crazy things about it. He was a skeptic about this stuff. <coughs> he was telling me these stories. I went, oh, that sounds great. Well, the moment I moved in, my job was to protect my daughter and I because something was not only a haunting, this was extremely vicious, almost rare in its kind. And I was put there to understand, without knowing it, my work in life. Before that, I had done things, I, a lot of historical things, the mall, Toad's place, doctor's offices, historical buildings. You know, I was a builder. And, you know, I, I'm not going to work in my degrees. Uh, what am I going to do with geology? I love building. So I started building it. You know, I got a little tired of it. And now all of a sudden, I guess the, the Lord in whatever form the Lord took in my life said, no, I got something else in mind for you, young man. Yeah. And what I had to do was I had to protect my daughter and I because from some of the names, including UCLA's Thelma Moss for School of Psychology, for first thing called, and said, you know, you can't always run, don't run with you. And I realized I had to make a stand right there for my daughter and I. Whatever this is, I have to find out what you do and do it. 
and that brought me to the Warrens. And we had a wonderful relationship. I'm in some of their books. I, to this day, I, I love them both. They gave me a real lot and a great head start. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you a question that um, my friend has asked you. Um, when you're walking down the street or you're in a crowd, are you listening to everybody, what everyone's saying in their mind? Are you, can you feel that? Or are you just, or is, is that what's going on? It can and what do you go on, do? Um, but I'm probably thinking about what's on, is that show that we really like on TV tonight? Do I have enough to make for dinner? What do I need to pick up? Oh, I gotta call so-and-so and so-and-so. Um, because otherwise, I would be drained. No one's asking me for help, but if something overtly is happening, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of get, it may not be like a language spoken, I'll just get like, like, poor guy. And I'll just say, please do something for him. And if I can't directly do it, I'll just know, please help that guy out in some way. Like, let's do that, okay? And then I just go out my business. Because I believe, um, I believe that sometimes divination prayer is what you put into it. But sometimes what you put into it is the faith of saying, please help this person and be forever grateful. And then maybe a few times that day or the next day, thank you for, I, I know someone heard me, thank you for helping them. If I did four hours of prayer, it would basically indicate that I have a lack of faith that anybody heard me the first time. So it's like this with me. Uh -huh. So I try not to, but if I notice something, I ask something on their behalf, and then I just go on with what I'm doing, trying to remember my favorite baseball player or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a, a, a question of the times. Uh, COVID, how is it affects people's, is it affecting people's mental health, their spiritual health, how, how is it affecting them? I believe it's bringing us um, into a new plane of the problems we have by realizing that there's something that can hurt everybody all at once, and when it's politicized, it becomes its own nightmare because, well, who's telling the truth? And then sometimes it's not about people who are trying to get away with something. Some people believe, well, maybe there is something about just let it go and we'll all adjust to it. And other people are going, no, that's not the way it works. Well, because I was educated as a scientist, I know that we had to deal with it. And it cannot be ignored. And that the funny thing is I saw a movie two weeks before this came out, that was done by Carl Sagan and Jennifer Aniston, and I think a few other people, and it was called Humanity, okay? And then it took out like something about the humanity changed, and it was like the word like human, human or something like that. Um, and what it was about was, it was a, a two-hour uh, uh, film about the best of us and the worst of us us making peace and praying and helping out the poor and helping each other out and, and really doing for animals and being good. Then it showed the other part of us in war and these highest things. And they left nothing to the imagination. Towards the very end, I'm seeing truckloads of pets, what I would think of as pets, on trucks. And I it was in it was in China because that's their custom and I, I was really upset. Um, and then there is a marketplace, and I'm watching that some of these things are taking certain animals that we wouldn't regard always as food, and the cook is looked at as being legitimate if he can fry it quick, gut it, and have it still trying to breathe. And I said, there's trouble coming from this. Twelve days later, the whole COVID blew up and came out in the news. Huh. And no, I don't know if, uh, I had nothing to do with that, and I would have thought that way despite anything, but it has tested our faith in each other, which is good. Faith not tested is a faith that's going to get lost. So even though there's problems and there's friction still going on, it will ultimately make us better. We all need each other to some degree. We're not always going to agree. Um, my freedom ends when I'm infringing on your freedom. Yeah. And if people don't understand that, it's because they have been fed and spoon-fed by the powers that be uh, that somehow by 
feeling that they're, you know, everything they think is most important and everybody else is just trying to hurt them and ruin them is a way to appeal people to believe in something or buy something. The fact of the matter is we're all in this together. And that if something I do can hurt somebody else, I gotta not do it. And then when I'm in a position where I'm not hurting them, I can do whatever I want. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. The internet is our best friend and our worst nightmare. And we're gonna have to work that out over a period of time. People think you press a button and things happen, and they believe if you see something on the internet, it must be true. So it's the information highway, it's also the misinformation highway. And I'm still working that out. I have a lot of problems with that because I'm old school, I just turned 70. Me, I loved that it. it was just fax machines and beepers. That was fine with me. Right. But I also love the internet. There's things that it's brought to the table for me that are wonderful. But like everything else, like the Model T, we gotta work things out. It's a work in progress. Yeah. Have you seen a rise in the spiritual activity? Yes. Since this COVID? It's actually been more recently. Um, that it's more not the co the COVID, but it's been people starting to separate into political factions, and I'm seeing that spur on spiritual activity. And the 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 answer is, I think, forthcoming is there will be a vaccine. And there will be something that will eventually help us all, that no matter who we are, we all can help or hurt each other. That's the nature of humanity. It's almost like cells in a body. We're kind of like one person, humanity. And it's like having a body that's fighting itself. Uh, what do you call that? Um, you know, immune deficiency, things like that, is the body's fighting it itself. We can't always fight ourselves. We have to somehow realize that, well, wait, they know a little more. I don't believe that, but maybe I have to listen to that. And this is the beginning of a new level of hum humanity, realizing that from outer space, there's no boundaries. There's no line saying U.S., Canada, Mexico, Russia, Estonia, Latvia. No, we're a green, blue planet, and we're all in this together. Oh. <clears throat> so, Andy, have you seen more of a rise, too, in the because of the COVID, more, more people coming to see you. Oh, yeah. With depression. Very much so. Um, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. I, I, this is my 53rd hour of work this week. Wow. Now, that's just sitting and working. Right. This is work, you know. Yeah. Uh, this is a 65 hour a week. Phone calls, all that. It's nuts. Absolutely insane. I just had a whole I just had a whole family get COVID this uh, this morning. The father's real sick. I've had families where where uh, multiple family members have died. Oh, sad. <laughs> I've had families where multiple family members have died and they've lost their business. Oh, that's uh, people with OCD, anxiety, uh, all that kind of stuff off the hook. Yeah. Um, depression. Uh, anxiety, uh, you name it, like serious, serious stuff, and it's it's uh, it's tough. I'm a very results-based kind of person. I'm not. He's more of a talker than I am. I'm more of a, I know what to what you can do to to move forward. Um, so I get a lot of good results, but still, it's. There were days during the, the, I mean, now the pandemic is back to being worse again. There were days where I had to stop work. I had to take time off. I burned out. I completely burned out. Wow. I was working from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night, six days a week. Oh, my God. Yeah. With people out. screaming and yelling and crying and flipping out. Oh. It was over the, it was over the rainbow. What do you do for yourself? Uh, well, I chant. Myoho Renge Buddhist. Um, I do uh, subconscious balancing work, you know, subconscious reprogramming work. Uh, I try and walk 10 miles a day. I'm a big walker. Uh -huh. uh, I walk and uh, talk to him. <laughs> I was gonna say, He's the best therapist in the world. We do. We have our Though family. generally, generally, like, if, like, I'm upset, I... I don't t talk about it a lot. He'll be more to say to me, what's bothering you? You're dark. Something is bothering you. You know what I mean? I'll generally be 
I'm a musician, so I put everything into my music. So being devastated and depressed is, you a, your music. is a normal condition for me because that's yeah, that's what you know. You have to be able to feel all those things to write. Um, oh, you write music too? Yeah, yeah, I'm a musician. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And so, um, uh, if something is way amiss in my system, then he'll uh, he'll tell me. So I don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You have somebody to go to, too. I can talk, talk to him you, four dude. times a day. I uh, call him in the morning. We talk all throughout the day. Uh, and if I walk, I have my phone in my, you know. Right. I walk a lot. What do you do, Richard? I get back everything in my way from Andy. He's um, given me a certain anchor and consistency that between, you know, my 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 child and my grandchild and, you know, that group, my, my, um, my future son-in-law, my, um, my, my very good friends and my work, but that still sometimes leads a, a little something else. Since Andy has entered my life, there's been an absolute noticeable difference because we are a constant. Um, even if sometimes we'll talk a lot, but sometimes it's a six or seven minutes and a minute later. And, and I'll see you tomorrow, leave a message. Not, not all it is that day. But I know that either I'll get a call to Andy or he'll give a call to me. It's something about um, something beyond my own little household with me and my partner and my, my pets. One of the things that I can count on in this world is the sun will rise, the sun will set, and I will probably talk to Andy in the morning or if not in the afternoon, at the very least. He's given me a stability that has probably more benefits than any one thing in my life outside of my heart connection to those I love. And it includes Andy. Well, the secret behind that is I know my place. Uh -huh. You see, I, 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 he says this all the time. I never once had an ego. I, I never, not once, ever, because I know my place. Or I. Yeah, your place is at the front of the line. <laughs> so um, I have another question for you, Rob yes. Richard. Uh, what has technology and the internet doing for us, and is it? continue to hurt us, and why? To say it's hurting us is also um, um, to say that's the other side of all the help it's doing for us. We're able to diagnose people in remote villages medically. We're able to look things up. Uh, we're able to have friends, you know, across. But one person can also pretend to be uh, 50,000 people. How do you know the difference? You set up a site. In fact, the man who was going to be our attorney general before Mr. Barr, um, I, I believe he was considered, and then it came out really quick, that this guy took money to, to do um, patents, because he put up a big site, never got anybody a patent. And he did so, he was pretended to be a big organization, and it was only an organizational one, so he got a lot of TV and radio spots. So, you know, it works both ways, but that's also starting to teach us now be cautious, sometimes look a little deeper. Um, uh, you have to be discerning because somebody could say, this is true, and have the same straight face as the person who studied and dedicated their life and say, this is true, how do you know the difference? That's where there's a problem. Um, that has to be meted out, but it has to happen in a way that we're not controlled by a third party because then that would mean somebody is deciding what's right and wrong for us. Oh, we just have to know that just because we hear it doesn't make it true. Just because we see it doesn't mean it hasn't been taken out of context. But what does get me upset is, um, okay, Black Lives Matter, wonderful idea, wonderful concept, wonderful that people could take, and it's on a camera, what's happening. That's good. May not be good for everybody, but that's good. But how about the kids who have a fight at school? You have 40 people taking their phones out as two people are really trying to hurt themselves and no one's breaking up the fight because they're too busy trying to get it on YouTube. Yeah. So it so goes both quiet. ways. It, it's really something that is kind of like um, 
medieval times uh, when we had the Black Plague and we were just getting back into, are we going to have empires? Uh, you know, umpire, you know, empires are going to be. Are they going to rise? going to be by religion, by politics, uh, by the city state? And there was a lot of confusion until eventually there was there was a Renaissance. You know, and then there was a Dark Ages. And then what happened again? There is the age of discovery and the age of the industry started happening. You know, everything got, does this. The internet, strangely enough, is, and it's the one thing that I do want to do more and have a lot more to say about it, is it's doing both at the same time. It's making us worse and making us better. And the, the, the main thing that I think we have to derive from the internet is that we have something that helps us that much, it can be used against us. So is it right that somebody might be able to shut off all the lights in America someday from somewhere else? Well, it's not about being right or, or, or wrong. It's the fact that we have to police everything we do. If we have children, we have to keep our eyes on them every minute of the day, especially young kids. They may put something in their mouth. We have to be careful of the internet, and yet we also can't make it something that's controlled. It has to be free. So we really have our work cut out for us, to be honest. Right. But I have a new concept, and it, it's, it's happening too much for me to ignore it. And that is, I, I mentioned in, a, in another, I think in this sequence, about spirits who are not of, you know, loving, caring. They need energy. They don't really have it. They just kind of peer in our zone, and they look for energy in order to continue. Well, the internet, the servers, the internet, the batteries, the phone, and our reaction to things also, it's a full kill. And I've, I've been wondering, why are these people having a haunting? Why, and it occurred to me, oh my God, it's the internet. It's what's coming through their house. It's the one you know part of the family that no one's talking about, the very vicious kind of dark stuff they're going to. It's the person trying to get something and they're able to order drugs from across the, the world on the internet. And, you know, mostly they're not going to find out. It, it, we're going to have to take the good with the bad. We've just started out with this. And one of the things I would advise to people, and they don't have to believe it, they only have to try it, which is whatever they believe in is to kind of ask that not only their family, their house, but their electronic gizmo and everything else that there's some light of love and of grace that shines on it, that it shouldn't be a portal of darkness. It should be something that we all benefit. If we all go that way, that's the way it's going to go. How do you know if, uh, how does one know if um, they're cursed or they have a haunting or some evil being is doing some harm to your home? If they're frightened, it doesn't mean it's bad, okay? But there's all these signs if things seem to happen at a certain time of night. If they're getting foul smells, not a good sign. If they're feeling horrible about something and watching somebody get really morose, all of a sudden, there's a problem there. And curses are real. I think the worst part of curses is people using the idea that they're cursed. So, oh, I can take your curse away for $10,000. But that doesn't mean that there's not places like Dudley Town in Connecticut, cursed. Are there objects that's cursed, like the doll in, in the Warrens? Oh, that was cursed. That is Raggedy Ann doll? Absolutely. How that works, I don't know. I only know I don't have to know because all I need to know is somehow a spirit is making that engine. Okay? And the last part of that is the worst kind is when a family brings to itself a curse. Like someone opens their mouth and goes, you and your kids and your children's children, blah, 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 blah. If the wrong ears are hearing it, it will go on for generations until it stopped. I've worked with about 15 of the clients I've gotten from Andy, and about 10 of them, you know, after speaking with them, I did that, and most of them reported things started getting better or getting better big time. Okay. Well, thank you both uh, for... Uh speaking in, in front of the camera to everyone about your psychic abilities and your therapy and how it works together. Um, I commend you very much and uh, you work very well together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.
And could I, can I suggest something? I, I don't know if this is on tape. It's okay if it is or isn't. Okay. I don't know if we have more than time. But um, I would like to think that something in the psychic and the shrink, uh, I, I would like to almost ask your viewers or on Facebook. I'd love them to friend me on Facebook so I can reach out to more people. I am going to have a site about what's true. I think like kids should know Christopher Columbus discovered America after other people did. But he should not get some, some attention for it. But that there's others who also need to. There's a certain level. So I'm looking forward to that. But the last part of it is I would like to take this, either the psychic and the shrink, somewhere else where we actually have people come with their problems and right then on the spot we spend an hour with them yeah. and, and work with them. Do you um, have a website? Uh, for the Psychic and the Shrink, is on your, your Facebook page? Facebook. You go to Facebook, Psychic and the Shrink. Well, that's going to grow soon. And I, and I love people's feedback on that, obviously. And I will have, the, it'll be thefreakingtruth.com. That'll be up and running within a month. Thefreakingtruth.com? Yeah. It's, okay. and, and there's no space. Freaking Truth, no, no space. And not the freakingtruth.com. Oh, freakingtruth.com. Yeah. And I just want people to know that some things just are, no matter who you are and what you are, a circle's a circle. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're the best.